Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. How are you guys doing? It's been such a tough week, honestly. Um, I'm based in Australia and um, I should say, but we have also been seeing everything that's been going on with the trial for Judge Floyd and so overwhelmed, so excited, so happy that his killer was finally brought to justice. Justice was finally served. But that is one in so many, so many lives that have been lost in this senseless killing of black people in America. So that brings me to my video for today. I want to talk about, I don't know if you guys will agree with me that these killings stem from racism, okay? So I want to talk about my experience living in Australia on racism. So, I came to Australia when I was 15 and I have lived here since then. I went to high school here and um, went to university here and everything like that. Um, so coming here as a 15 year old, first of all, I was put in a school where I was the first black in that school, the first, and this is a public school, this was a public school, okay, and I was the first black in that school, and going to that school, first of all, anybody that knows me knows that, um, when I don't really know people around, I'm an introvert, okay, keep to myself, I don't really come out of my shell until I really know the people that I'm around. And being that young as well, I was used to it being just oh, me and my dad. And you know, I was angry, first of all, to be even moving to Australia. Because I loved living in Ghana. I loved it. I had my friends. Um, you know, it had taken me a while to get used to it. Just when I was starting to really come into my own, we had the opportunity to come to Australia. But anyways, so when going to a school when it was predominantly white, you would get really ignorant questions like, oh my God, did you live on trees? Did you live in huts? And this was 2000 and 2006, 2007, yeah, these kids are asking such stupid questions as that, whether they were trying to be funny or just trying to be, you know, young and stupid, I don't know, but they would ask such stupid questions and past comments, you know, when questions would be asked in class. Um, you know, and then obviously I wouldn't answer. They would pass comments such as, Oh, why don't you ask the black girl? Oh, hang on, wait, she doesn't speak English. I went to an international school back in Ghana. English and French was what was taught there, okay? And I spoke really good English when I came to Australia. Yeah. To the extent that you want to join the video, okay, we've got someone joining us. To the extent that um, I was told, thank you, I was told not to attend what they call here as ESL. Oh. So usually when you come here um, without English being your first language, you attend ESL, which is English as a second language classes. 
before transitioning. But I never went into any of that. I went straight into high school. Okay. So, when they would say stuff like that, it would be really, really annoying. I'm trying to film you guys. Your daughter is here disturbing me. Melody. I just want to film one video. Just one video. Can I just film one video? One video? Please? No? Anyways, guys, sorry about that. Um. Can I please film my video? Okay. Will you be quiet? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um. To me, one of my. <laughs> Are you gonna keep talking every time I try to talk? She be quiet, and as soon as I start talking, she starts talking too. <laughs> to go no. Bye. 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 Anyways, one of my most painful, painful, painful experiences that I had in racism was being in a school bus. Well, it wasn't a school bus. It was the bus that took me home from school. Um, from school to, um, to home, obviously, but it was a public bus. So, catching a bus and then this guy comes in and tells me hey stand up i was like what and he was like stand up get up from where you're sitting so i was like okay you know what because i could smell the alcohol i knew he was intoxicated so i'm like you know what i'm just going to move to a different seat just to avoid anything because He's a grown ass man. I'm a kid, you know, at that time. So I moved to a different seat, like four rows down from where I was that he told me to stand up from just to um, eliminate or to um, prevent myself from getting into any form of argument or anything with a drunk person. Keep in mind, this was a public bus that had other people in it, okay? There were other people in this bus. Anyway, so I moved. He walked behind me, like, I told you to stand up. And I'm like, excuse me, there's so many other seats in this bus. Can you just go sit somewhere and just leave me alone? He's like, no, get the F out of this bus. You black this, you black that. You don't deserve to be here. And I was like, excuse me, you paid for the bus the same way I paid for the bus. And there were people in this bus, nobody could say, hey mate, leave her alone. Okay? Just leave her alone. Nobody, including the bus driver. To the extent of this man breaking the bottle that he had in his hand in the bus and threatened me to get off and this was in the hearing of everybody else in the bus okay everybody else in the bus i just pressed the bell and i got off the bus not on my stop at a stop that i don't even know okay keep in mind we had just moved here i was still getting oriented or orientated with my environment okay so I didn't really know where I was. I got off just because I wanted to be safe. I got off and I was shaking. I was so scared. A grown ass man just threatened me with a bottle in a bus full of people. Nobody could say anything, not even the bus driver. I got off and at that time I didn't have a phone. So, but I'm really good with directions, okay? So obviously I'm like, you know what, the bus passes through this route, route all, all the time. So I started walking in the 
path that the bus usually goes through, which obviously is going to take me longer to get home. But I walked through that path until I got home. So instead of me getting home at 3 o'clock, I got home at 6 o'clock that night. My dad was annoyed, he was angry, he was worried. What's going on? Well, I think I got home. No, maybe at 4 something, yeah. Anyways, he's like, what, what took you so long? Where were you? Where? And I explained to him and I was shaking, I was crying. And anybody that knows my dad knows he's, oh no, you don't mess with his daughter, no way. He said, come on, let's go. I said, where are we going? We're going to the bus depot. So he took me, so luckily we didn't leave too far from where the bus depot was, where all the buses pack at the end of the day. Um, so he took me there and he goes, do you remember the bus driver's name? And when we came to Australia, the first thing that they had taught us was, when you catch a bus or a taxi, make sure you look at the, the ID of the bus driver because the, the, they have it up there. So as you enter into the bus and you pay, look at the name of the bus driver or their, their employee number, whatever it's called. So I had taken notice of the name on there. So anyways, when we went there, my dad was so angry. I explained what had happened, that this guy came into the bus, threatened me, you know, to get off the bus. I refused. He broke a bottle, threatened me, so I had to get off the bus. So, and um, my dad was like, what are you guys going to do about this? And uh, reported the issue, and they got this bus driver. They asked him, what the hell were you thinking? This young girl was threatened. You never, okay, sorry guys, my battery actually died. But as I was saying, so, um, we reported this and um, the bus driver was asked, why didn't you do anything? And this guy said, because he felt scared as well. So he just thought the best way to protect everybody else was not to get involved. Does that make sense? Please, please, please help me make it make sense because, oh! Lord, fly just came in. Oh, I hate flies. Anyways, make it make sense to me, please. How is it that you're saying that to protect everybody else, there was one child in the bus with a bus full of adults, but you were trying to protect all the adults and not the child? So you dropped off this child in the middle of nowhere for them to walk home and that was you trying to protect her anyways i'm saying all this to say this is for those people that um you know because i post all the brutalities that are going on in america okay a verdict was given for judge judge floyd and not even an hour later, there was reports that another girl had been shot and left on the pavement. Micaiah, I think that's her name, left on the pavement to bleed to death, okay? I'm saying all this to say that, yes, I'm glad I live in Australia, okay? But, we might not have the racism that is happening in America at the moment, but Australians are racist. Yes, they try to say they're not because, you know, there's so many different nationalities and cultures in Australia, and Australia is a melting pot. Yes, it is, but the racism is here. It's just not as blatant. Okay, it's just not as blatant as America, but it is here. We see it every day with the jokes that they might make, you know, or asking my child that is two years old, where was he born? It makes me realize that this color, this skin of ours, no matter where we go, Except for if it's in Africa, we will always be asked, 
those questions. Where are you from? But a white child will never be asked that. Even if that child just came from Russia, from, um, you know, um, wherever else today, that child will never be asked that because they're white. Automatically, they think that child is Australian or is American or whatever it is. I do this for you guys. It's supposed to be my baby right now. But I'm here trying to get content out for you guys. So, subscribe. Like this video. Anyways. So, yeah. Um, My whole point, my whole point in this, my whole point of this video is that even though we might live in Australia, Okay, us as black people, we still have to support our black brothers and sisters in other parts of the world. Because why? We are all in the same boat. Okay? Just because it is not happening here where you live doesn't mean that it doesn't affect you. Doesn't mean it doesn't affect you. You might decide tomorrow that I want to move for a different reason, whether it's for a job, relationship, whatever, that I want to move. So you move to a different part of the world. You've got kids. You know, those kids of yours will travel one day. That's how you move around the world. These issues affect every one of us. So please guys, let us try and support. Even if it's just by posting, reposting, the issues that we're seeing that's what social media is there for these days is to lend our voices to issues that are happening in the world in the society okay every single repost on something gives it more exposure every single repost on an issue gives it exposure so let's keep supporting each other. Let's try and end this systemic racism. Because these people come to Africa, nobody threatens them. They live freely and happily. They even claim things that are not theirs. We're very accepting. So why can't they accept us? Why can't they accept us? Especially those that live in America. Especially the black Americans. Their forefathers are slaves that were taken from our land in Africa. Okay? They were brought here against their will. And now they're treated as if they really came here. Let's keep speaking up. Let's keep reaching out. Let's keep sharing, reposting, and lending our voice to every single issue. Please, guys. Thank you guys for watching this video. Let me know below what you guys think of the George Floyd verdict. Guilty on all three counts or all three charges. Let me know. What you guys think down below let's discuss guys thank you guys for being part of this family i am going to be i'm thinking about changing the direction of my channel but you guys let me know what other videos you guys would like to see i have a short i think there should be a vlog either before this or after this video i'm not sure but if that video drops before let me know if you guys want to see vlog style videos with my family or you know um sit down videos like this which is me or maybe with hubby 
let me guys let me know guys okay and i'll get i will shoot videos that you guys want to see because at the end of the day it's you guys that are watching these videos okay guys talk to you guys in another one catch you later peace